Welcome to Pop Off Workshop. Well, I'm starting the inlay uh, series of the videos, and today I'm starting with the easel inlay generator, and I did this very, very simple uh, inlay with just a scrap piece of plywood and some scrap wood that I had around the shop, and it's worked really well. And I want to show you how I did it with just the basic settings in easel. And then from there, we're going to progress on and on as this series continues. So if you haven't subscribed, by all means, subscribe. You're not going to want to miss this series of videos. So let's get started today. To be able to have a real good understanding of the easel software in relationship to the inlays, we're going to have to start at the very beginning and look at the software itself before we actually begin testing anything on the CNC machine. The first thing that I have done is opened up a new file for a new project in easel. And the size of the workpiece is just 12 by 8 perfectly fine. What we're going to be carving is something much, much smaller than that. But to begin with, let's look over at the thickness of the material. Currently, the thickness of the material is set at a half an inch, and that's going to be okay for this first demonstration purpose. And then also, the bit size that's in here is going to be an eighth of an inch. This is very important because based on the design that we choose, that may or may not get the detail that you want. So we're going to start out with these two figures and we'll go from there. And I want to show you actually what happens as we go through the process. Now, as I zoom in and show you this, this is set for a half inch material. I also have an eighth inch bit. These two factors are going to be very important. Most important, as far as the eighth inch bit, it will be able to clear out the pocket fairly quickly, but also it will not have a lot of detail. So depending on the inlay that you want to have, you've got to take that in consideration. One of the things that I truly love is this Pro Design Library. This is going to give you actually thousands of pieces of artwork that you will be able to choose from to be able to get any type of design that you want to be able to do the inlays. This is absolutely amazing. And I'm not going to show you all of this because there's just too many to even think about, but this is absolutely amazing. But for now, what I'm going to do is just highlight this little uh, dog paw and we're going to bring that in and I want to bring this in as a fill. The main reason that I brought this in as a fill is because of the shape. This will give me nice even cuts using that eighth inch bit. The next thing I want to show you the depth that it brings it in is at point two. That's not important at this point, but what I'm going to do is go ahead with this highlighted now. We're going to come over to the apps, select the apps, and this is the inlay generator. Now this app creates both the cutout and the pocket parts. Also, you do not need to set the cutout to the outside. All of that's taken care of for you. Now, currently, right now, I have the bit size as the 0.128, which is what I had shown you just a moment ago. So, when you're setting up your inlays, this is the first thing you need to be able to adjust depending on the bit size that you're using. And then the next thing is the tolerance. That actually is going to be able to create how much allowance you're going to be able to have to be able to put that inlay into the pocket. Currently is set at three thousandths of an inch. We're going to leave it just like that as the default setting. So let's go ahead and import that in. 
first thing I want to do is go ahead and slide this one out of the way. And these are the two pieces that we're going to be working with. The first thing is the pocket. And you notice the pocket is set at 0.3 of an inch. This is the actual inlay right here. And it has all of the tabs. First thing I want to be able to do is get rid of the tabs. Because that's just going to get in our way for the purpose of this demonstration. Now if you look at this, this is showing where it's going to be cutting all the way through. Now because our material was half inch thick, it's cutting at a half inch depth to be able to cut all the way through. The idea behind this is that these pieces will fit into the pocket. Now I want to slide the pocket out of the way and I want to bring the actual inlay over closer and then I want to be able to zoom in real close on this. This blue line that is the actual path. So this is cutting on the path. So when it's cutting, you see this bit right here is actually going to be cutting inside, creating this um, cutout. Now, how is that going to fit into our um, pocket? Well, let's grab the pocket and see. And if you look at that, you can see exactly how that's going to be cutting. Because this one is cutting on the outside. And that's going to be cutting and sitting right in there. So those allowances are done. The one thing that I don't like is these little tabs right here. I don't like that, those little pieces. But you can actually see how that fits in, and that's the point of this discussion. If I change the bit size, if I go ahead and delete this, let's cut it. We'll cut this one. And we'll go back to the original one that we have up here. First thing I'm going to do is change this to a sixteenth of an inch bit. I'm going to come over here to my app, click on this, and we're going to change this to a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to type in 0 .063. We're going to leave the tolerance the same, and let's go ahead and import that in. Now, these little bumps that we had before are gone. The depth of the cut is still at the 0.5 of an inch. And if I take and put this one right on top again, well, let's make it easier. Let's take this I'm going to highlight, whoops, I just want one. We'll eliminate the tabs. We're going to put this over at four and five. So I'm going to click on this right here in the center. I'm going to put my X axis at five, put this at four. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to go ahead and select this at 5 and 4. And now that's going to be directly on top of it. Let's zoom in. And you can see how that should fit perfectly in that space. And that's using a sixteenth of an inch bit. Now here's the problem that I want to be able to discuss with you. This is setting up on a half inch material. 
are you really going to be using a half inch thick material to do the inlay? Probably not. I don't think that you will. So here's what I want to do. I want to open up a new workpiece. I want to be able to take back at the first one. Let's separate this out. And I want to take my inlay itself. I'm going to hit Control C. And I'm going to go over to my new workpiece and put Control V. With this now open and a new workpiece, I want to change my depth. The wood that I'm going to use for this demonstration is actually 0.29 of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and put in 0.29. In fact, I want it to cut all the way through. So 0 0.30. And that will take care of that part. And when we look at my depth of cut now, this needs to be not at the 0.5. It needs to be at 0.3. Now I want to be able to set this up where I'm cutting off of the center. So I'm going to go back to my shape with this highlighted here. I want to be able to put my XY coordinates at zero. By doing that, this is going to be my XY zero home position and I'm going to be able to cut all the way through this material right there. So now this part is set up and I'm going to have these individual pieces and I'm gonna use the glue and tape method to be able to hold this down so that I can protect and save these pieces as they cut out. Now I wanna go back over to my other one and I want to cut this because that's already set up. I want to get rid of the original one. We'll cut that. Now, we're cutting through material that is 0.3 inches thick. This is actually cutting at 0.3 of an inch. Do I really need to cut it all the way that deep? Really don't. I'm going to change this and we're going to go at 0.2 of an inch. What that will allow me to be able to do is press in the inlay into this wood and be able to clamp it and be able to hold it tight while the glue dries. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one. I want to set this up where it has the XY zero position at the home and we're going to cut this out. That's going to be zero and zero. We'll zoom out, and you can see that is sitting right there. Now, because this is a sixteenth of an inch bit, how long is it going to take to be able to cut this? It's going to take about a half hour to go down. Yeah, to go down to point two of an inch. Why don't we do this? Let's go down point one of an inch, and let's see if that cuts our time in half. So 0.1, and now let's recalculate this. Now that takes about 15 minutes, and that's going to give me the inlay that we want, and it will be sticking proud above this pocket. Now let's go over and try this and see how it cuts and see if these inlay pieces will actually fit. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just take a little piece of scrap plywood, nothing fancy, and we're going to cut out the pocket. So I'm just taking the bump stops and it has this little slot in it and I use this as my clamp and hold down also and it works real well. These bump stops or clamps or and clamps I should say are a free download on the Inventables project page. So you can get these if you wish. But all I'm going to do is just use this little lip right here and be able to hold that down and that works perfect and really all I need is two of them and that's going to hold this project down without any problem at all. Now because I'm doing the pocket right now I don't need to worry about the glue and tape method 
So that is going to be just fine. I have my X marked right here in the center. That is going to be my home position. We're going to get everything out of the way. And then I'm going to change the bit. And I'm going to be putting in a sixteenth of an inch bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and move the CNC machine over to this point to establish my XY0 home position. And I'm just lowering down the Z-axis just so I can be more accurate. Now because this is a scrap piece of wood, it really doesn't have to be exact. So I'm going to call that good right now. I'm going to go ahead and raise this up now. We're going to raise it up more than that. There we go. That will give me room to be able to put in the, uh, the sixteenth of an inch. Now this is a sixteenth of an inch up cut bit. Typically I would probably use a down cut bit. But again, this is scrap and this is just to test this process. So I'm grabbing this bit to use. Okay, I've got the sixteenth of an inch bit in position now and it's over my XY0 home position. I'm just going to go through the checklist now and um, be able to carve out this pocket. The other thing that I could probably do, and I'll say this now, I could probably do this as a two-stage carving and use an eighth inch bit to cut out the bulk of it and then come back with a sixteenth of an inch bit and cut the outer edge. But again, I want to stay with the stock settings on this first process. I will more than likely speed up the uh, feed rate as this is carving. I want to see how this uh, reacts with this bit in it with this piece of plywood. I'm going to go ahead and hit carve. Material is uh, the thickness again doesn't matter but I have that set at the 0.5 of an inch. Material is definitely secured. I am using the sixteenth of an inch bit and we're going to go ahead and probe. So that process is done. We'll get that out of the way. Z probe is put away. XY zero position is set. We'll skip the dust boot. Spindle is on. Can I increase the feed rate to 52 inches per minute? I'm going to go ahead and let it stay at that. You'll notice a little bit of the frame here that is normal because this is an upcut bit. Now while that's carving in the background, I want to be able to say that again, this is very definitely stock position. There is nothing that I'm really altering here other than the thickness of the wood to be able to set this up. And I want to see if this is actually going to fit and work before I start making the adjustments. The other thing is, keep in mind, we could do the two-stage carving to be able to carve this even faster. I've already reduced this down to a 0.1 of an inch for the depth, which I think is fine. But could I have cut this in one or two passes instead of three? Perhaps so. But again, this is a sixteenth of an inch bit. Now, one of the things that I'm going to be doing as we advance through this series of videos is I'm going to be making some very small inlays and I'm going to be using a 32nd of an inch bit to be able to do that. You're not going to want to miss this. And I'm going to put it on a round cylinder, which is even going to be more fun as we get into this. So this is going to be a very exciting series to be able to follow all the way through. Let's go back and see how the machine's doing. Okay, that actually 
it looks really good. Let me get this up close. So this is the pocket. And the only thing that you can see is a little bit of fray in here. And that's because I used the upcut bit. Not a big deal for this test. I'll just hit a, a piece of sandpaper and hit that a little bit and that'll be taken care of. Now the little scrap that I'm going to use is a piece of poplar and this is the 0.29 inches thick. You can see that in the camera at 0.29 inches thick. That's what we're going to cut out the little paw with. And on this I will use the tape and glue method to hold that down. The other thing that I want to point out on this little dog paw these are actually individual pieces. So in essence, this is like having five different inlays for this one little paw. Now I have my tape down and it's secured on both of these pieces. Now I'm taking the Starbond glue. Now this is the medium thickness and uh, you could use the thin, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick this down. Now keep in mind, I do have a 15% discount in the description below if you would like to be able to purchase this glue. It only takes a little bit. Then I'm going to spray the accelerator. Then I'll position that right there. Hold that down for just a moment. And we'll be ready to go as soon as I get the work area all cleared off. That is nice and tight now. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the router back over. Set up my XY0 position right here at this point, And be able to carve out these little pieces. Hey, I have my XY0 position set right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and raise this up and be able to do the Z probe. And we'll follow the checklist through. <laughs> Probe's complete. We'll set that aside. The Z probe is put away. And the set XY0, we've already done that. So it is set, ready to go. So I click OK on that. Skip the dust boot. Turn on the spindle. And hit card. Now before I carved it, I did change one thing. Instead of having the three passes to be able to cut through the material, I went ahead and set it to four passes. So the depth of cut per pass was at 0 .075. And I wanted to be just a little bit easier on the bit itself. And that's the reason I made that change. So let's go ahead now and let's see if this fits. So, without making any alterations at all, that looks really good. There's no movement. That's nice. So what I could do now is just glue these down and sand it, and that would be a very nice inlay. Not bad at all. Now this was at the three thousandths of an inch tolerance. Could I make that tolerance slightly tighter? Mm, I don't know that I could on this wood. This fits really good. If I slip that out and slip that back in, that fits in there about as perfect as you can get it. So I think the first test has been extremely successful 
using the easel software with the in inlay app. It doesn't lift out. There we go. Not bad. I think I'll go ahead and glue this up. Now I took a piece of sandpaper and literally just hit it very, very lightly. That's really all that I did. <sighs> Cleaned out the pocket where there's no debris, no sawdust in there at all. And that's all the prep work that I'm doing on the uh, pocket. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue in here and spread it around. And we're going to go ahead and set these in place. Now as far as the inlay itself, this bottom edge is perfectly uh, clean and smooth. It's the top edge that has a little bit of fuzz on it. And I'm not worried about that because that's going to get cut off. So we're going to leave that alone. So let's add a little bit of glue. There we go. And we'll spread that all around. If I had a little brush, that would probably be better, but I don't. I need a little bit more in there. There we go. I'm going to try to get it on the side walls also. All right, we'll get another piece of wood. We'll put on top of it and we'll clamp it down. come back in about a half an hour and we'll pull this off there we go so while the glue is drying I want to mention a couple of things one I have read on a lot of the uh, different Facebook groups and on the forum where people have had all kinds of problems using the inlay generator in easel to be able to do their inlays if you have questions please go ahead and put them down in the comments so that I can see the different questions and be able to address them for you. If I can answer these questions and make your inlays better, then that's what I want to be able to accomplish. So please leave me a comment down below and let me know your good and your bad experiences and what type of questions that you have so that we can all progress with being able to do better inlays. I want to zoom in really close so that you can see this first inlay. Now granted, I cannot sand all the way perfectly smooth because I'll eat away at the plywood uh, surface, but and I don't want to take away that veneer. But you can see overall, this looks very, very good. There's only a slight variation between the uh, pocket, but not so much that it's going to cause any type of problem at all. So the next thing I'm going to do is move on to the solid wood and uh, do another inlay. But I'm very, very pleased with this.